This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where sleep is overrated. In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. If you missed the previous lessons of the series, check out the description box below for the links. If you're interested and you would like to see more videos like this, please give this a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Today's focus is on how to weave the golden thread in your research design. Let's get right into it. In our previous tutorials, we covered the importance of the golden thread and ways you can weave it through alignment. Today we will focus on how to consider the golden thread as you define your research plan. Here is a quick recap of our example as covered in the previous lessons. Our topic, towards an understanding of the digital native perception and readiness for a change in the primary and secondary school system. Background and intro, there is a call to radically change the school system because there is presumably a new type of student called digital native who is practically addicted to technology. Our problem statement is that there is no research on the subject that speaks to the school kids of South Africa, so how do we know that we are doing the right thing by radically changing the school system? In our study, we want to understand the digital native status, their learning preferences and how ready they are for changing the school system when it comes to the use of technology. In our literary review, we had a few arguments on socioeconomic conditions, parental control, skills transfer, how the school system itself may be influenced by a tech-heavy curriculum, and the learning preferences of the digital native. Now it's time to build our next chapter, which is the research design and methods chapter. In our previous tutorial, we did the alignment checks after we had created our chapters and had to update the chapter when we were misaligned. In this tutorial, I will show you how to build the alignment into your chapter as you write, which will ultimately reduce rework efforts. To build quality into your work as you write, you need to have visual reminders of things like your title, problem statement and research questions, and all the arguments you made during your literary review. Write them on a physical piece of paper as a checklist. I'm recommending physical paper as it is easier to manage than toggling between different documents on your computer. Also, writing things down is a therapeutic technique you can use when you feel overwhelmed, which you will experience when you do this. Based on our example, here is our visual reminders. First, we look at the important parts of our title, which are digital natives, readiness and school system. In our background and introduction, we highlight the key concepts, which are school kids, learning, preferences, South Africa and technology. From our previous tutorial, we know that we also touch on digital native readiness and the school system in our background, but for our visual reminders, there is no point in repeating things. So essentially, we only add the unique concepts of that chapter to our visual board. Next, we look at our lit review and the unique concepts there are socioeconomic status, parental control and skills transfer. Considering our written down topic, research questions and lit review arguments, our data collection plan could look like the following. We will collect data from primary and school kids. The study would be useless if we don't. To be more specific, we will be collecting data from primary and school kids in South Africa. That means we are taking care of our key concepts, secondary and primary school kids and South Africa. Since part of our key concepts are socioeconomic status, we need to find schools in South Africa from different neighborhoods. We need to look at schools that are located in what is considered as low income, middle of the road income and those located in what is considered affluent communities. Now we have taken care of the key concept socioeconomic status. We will ask these kids about their interaction with technology. We will do this to establish if we are dealing with a digital native as a generation or if we are dealing with a digital native as an elite. This means we take care of key concepts technology and digital native. On that note, we can ask them about their proficiency regarding the use of technology at home and at school. We do this to establish if they have the skills to adapt to a radically changed school system where technology is concerned. This means we have means to establish their readiness and will have data to run tests on their skills transfer correlations. Speaking of home and school lives where technology is concerned, we will also ask them if their habits of using technology is restricted at either locations. That means we have data on parental control, not just at home but also their pseudo-parental control at school. We will also ask them how they prefer to learn, as in, we need to ask them what tech they are currently using in the classroom and if they would like to use anything else. That takes care of learning preferences and school system. By constantly referring to our visual reminders, we are creating alignment as we write. This means that there is no need for post-writing checks. But if it makes you feel better, nothing is preventing you from double or triple checking. 
Continue this process to ensure alignment between all chapters. This alignment contributes to the golden thread. Of course, alignment is just part of the golden thread. We have yet to answer the so what of it all, which will be covered in the next tutorial. In summary, create a visual board of your key concepts. Bold alignment into your chapters as you write to avoid massive rework. That concludes this lesson. The next one is focused on answering the ultimate golden thread question. Thank you for watching. Let me know what other topics you would like me to cover. Signing off.